Hello. This video is the beginning of a series of videos on nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the different mechanisms that this particular re kind of reaction can undergo. Uh, in general, acyl represents uh, having a carbonyl group next to some other heteroatom. And I'm going to use X. Uh, and I recognize X is generally a... Uh, for, it generally means halogen. So actually, I think I'm going to write LG for leaving group, something that can be a leaving group under the right circumstance. And we are going to replace it with something that can be a nucleophile under the right circumstance. And then nucleophile, we're going to... Who is the leaving group? Right. And like other nucleophilic substitution reactions, this reaction generally requires a nucleophilic attack and a loss of leaving group step. Now, the identity of the nucleophile and the leaving group can, and, and other conditions, verify uh, or, or can control which mechanism. So, let's talk about strong basic nucleophiles. Uh, and in the strong basic nucleophile case, I'm actually going to talk about a specific reaction uh, so that we're, we're just dealing with... Uh, and we're dealing with a specific reaction and not something generic. I know sometimes in my mechanism videos, I do generic things. Um, they, 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 I am not. So, um, so my strong basic nucleophile, and my, my uh, electrophile or my molecule with my leaving group, I have an ester. So, uh, hydroxide anion is my strong basic nucleophile. Okay, and then the methoxy group on the ester is actually my leaving group. And this is not something we would normally consider a leaving group on an sp3 hybridized carbon, but in fact, um, we're not on an sp3 hybridized carbon, so we can do things a little bit differently. Oh, and you know, the nucleophilic part of hydroxide is OH, so, so we generate uh, the carboxylic acid here, and you'll see why we need uh, aqueous acid in a moment. Hydroxide anion here. Uh, so the first step of the mechanism is nucleophilic attack by the hydroxide. Um, because we have an sp2 hybridized uh, carbon, and we can't do direct like SN2 kind of things. Yeah. And we can't do uh, SN1 kind of things. Carbocation is not particularly stabilized. Uh, but we can have nucleophilic attack. And there is a weak bond, in this case the carbon-oxygen pi bond, that can break. And we generate this tetrahedral alkoxide intermediate. Uh, and it is worth sharing that some people like like to call like to refer to this thing as the tetrahedral intermediate. I guess it is tetrahedral where the uh, starting you know, the reactant and the product are, are trigonal planar. And so we have nucleophilic attack and the second step is right arrows. There we go. Loss of leaving group. And um, here we are with the product, but one of the things that's important to remember that is that if we're dealing with carboxylic acids as a product, they are in fact uh, acidic and our nucleophile is basic. Uh, and so whenever we have hydroxide as a nucleophile in this kind of reaction, we're going to generate the carboxylic acid, but the carboxylic acid will then immediately be deprotonated to form the carboxylate anion, because the carboxylic acid is acidic, the nucleophile is basic. And this is why we need to add acid as a second step. And it's sometimes common when you have a strongly basic nucleophiles like Grignard reagents and hydride transfer reagents to need to add an acid 
you know, the second step to supply a proton to an anionic intermediate compound. Okay. So here is the uh, strong basic nucleophiles, right? If we don't have a strong nucleophile, so we have a weak nucleophile instead, these reactions require acid. And this is uh, similar to, to the case of nucleophilic additions to aldehydes and ketones. With weak nucleophiles, the reaction is not going to occur on its own, and you're going to need acid. And I'm actually going to use uh, the conversion of a carboxylic acid into an ester as my example here is because I know that this is a reaction that requires uh, the, the nuclear requires an acid. The nucleophile, you know, the leaving group is, is OH. The nucleophile is OCH3, or the, the group that's being added is OCH3. So I'm going to have methanol. I'm going to have acid. Um, and then some people want to be specific, like sulfuric acid is a common acid. And I'm putting it in brackets there to indicate that it is... Uh, you know, in methanol solution, this is an aqueous sulfuric acid. Move this up a little bit. Okay, I have room. Sorry for the for the wild scrolling. Uh, because we have neutral nucleophile, and the neutrophile nucleophile is a weaker nucleophile. We need to protonate our carbonyl group first, and the carboxylic acid and all of the the pertinent derivatives are basic and, and at the carbonyl oxygen. That's where the uh, lone pair, that's where the, um, oh, oh, the, oh, what is that word? The localized lone pairs are, sorry. And then we can have nucleophilic attack. Uh, the carbon oxygen pi bond breaks. So this step is very similar to the, the previous step. Uh, there's, of course, some differences. Now, um, you know, our nucleophile came in with an extra proton, so that proton is still there. Uh, something has to come and take it away. The only thing that's hanging out in this reaction is the, the nucleophile slash solvent, so we're going to use methanol again for that. Take away this proton. Now I've got my neutral tetrahedral intermediate. And, and, you know, this step actually looks a lot like a nucleophilic addition reaction uh, to an aldehyde or a ketone, except we have something on here that could function like a leaving group. We will protonate one of our OHs make it a good leaving group. And then now this leaving group leaves, and and some people will show the you know the other a lone pair on the other oxygen helping it on its way out. You're welcome to do that. Uh, you're also welcome to draw you know, what looks like a carbocation intermediate. It's okay. Uh, and now we have another protonated carbonyl group, and uh, this looks like, you know, we need something to come away and remove that proton. And once again, uh, even though we had water as a leaving group, we're doing this reaction in some kind of way that we can remove water as it's forming, so I'll just use methanol again as my base. And so I do recognize that I've kind of uh, run this thing around in a circle, but here is the mechanism for the acid version. Right? Uh, and it's worth noting that actually this acid version looks like a nucleophilic addition, this first part here. Followed, whoa, I'll go off screen. There we go. Followed by an E1 elimination on the other side, on the other half. Okay. Uh, 
And this is a similar, actually, similar pattern to some uh, reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Products are a little different, but similar kind of, of deal. All right. There's one more version of this mechanism. And this is a version where we have good neutral nucleophiles. You know, and in this particular case, I'm going to use the acid chloride as my uh, electrophile. I'm going to use ammonia as my nucleophile. Uh, and this is most common the, this mechanism is most common either with uh, acid chlorides as electrophiles because chlorine is such a good leaving group so that even some of the weaker nucleophiles can react with it without acid or base or with uh, nitrogen based nucleophiles because they are tend to be they do tend to be good nucleophiles but they are often uh, but they're neutral molecules and so you, you know, but they can be bases themselves and so you know, so they're neutral, kind of basic. They're not. They're not anionic. Uh, and so this mechanism has some things in common with the strong basic mechanism. It starts off with direct nucleophilic attack. Actually, let's let's. I actually want my my chlorine here and. Uh, Oh, and I don't want two chlorines. Hold on. Yes, this is how I want to look. And I'm missing my oxygen. And it needs a negative charge. And so you form this doubly charged intermediate initially. Um, sort of a, it's called actually a zwitter ion. It has both positive and negative charges. And some people will insist that you need to draw external proton transfer like like ammonia coming and picking up this extra proton and then donating it to to the oxygen um, as as a possibility or you know this is a this isn't this is acid acidic and this is basic and so you can just imagine those two things are close enough together in space to to have a likely proton transfer uh, there are also some folks that will just happily draw the loss of leaving group right coming out of this. Uh, and that's cool too. So it looks even more like the, the basic version. And, and in, in my class, I would accept such a mechanism. Uh, I'm going to have this actually go up at an angle a little bit because I don't want it in my face or behind my face. You know, but regardless of what you do, you do get an intermediate or you do get a protonated intermediate, whether that extra proton is on the oxygen or the nitrogen. And so you'll need another equivalent of ammonia or your amine nucleophile to do protonate. So here's this good nu neutral nucleophile kind of version. Oh, and I, I did mention, right, that some folks will, instead of what I have drawn here, happily draw, and I think that there's there's nothing wrong with. I'm trying to make some room for it. Uh, let's see. Let's bring up in here. I can actually delete some of this stuff above it. Here we go. Let's make some room for the good neutral nucleophiles. So instead of drawing the internal proton transfer, just recognizing that chloride is a really good leaving group, and so it can just it can just head on out here. Um, and we get a different uh, protonated intermediate. This time the extra proton is on the nitrogen. Yeah, and as usual, I don't quite like the way this looks. So we'll, we'll do it like this. And you know, ammonia can deprotonate this extra nitri extra hydrogen and uh, form the same amide product. So there's actually a couple of ways you could draw this. All of these things are kind of probably happening and are competing around at the same time. So uh, 
you know, feel free to draw any of these that you want. If you know, if you're if you're an instructor or someone other than me, and they have a clear preference for which version the internal proton transfer followed by you know loss of leaving group or loss of leaving group then proton transfer, I um, you know stick with what your instructor tells you to do. All right. So this concludes my video on the mechanism. In the upcoming videos, I'm not going to show mechanisms of reactions that follow this pathway. I'm just going to identify which mechanisms they are uh, so that I don't spend a lot of time in those videos continuing to do mechanisms and instead focusing on the reagents needed for the different transformations. Thank you for watching.